This is Michael Hill reporting for Superbike News Television here at Brno for the Czech Republic round of the 2012 World Superbike Championship. I'm joined now by Moto Grand Prix star Carol Abraham. Carol, uh, unusual to uh, to see you here at Brno, considering that you live uh, just down the road. But what what brings you here this weekend, apart from coming to see uh, your best English friend? <laughs> Who's my best English friend? I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure we'll find him. But uh, it's good to see you this weekend, Carol. I know we've uh, we've been friends for a few years now, but. Uh, he is spectating this weekend before you go to Laguna on Sunday. Yes, that's right. Unfortunately, I will not be able to see the race on Sunday because my flight is on Sunday very early in the morning. But anyway, I came here to watch the bikes, to see them at the, at the racetrack, to see super bikes because I don't have uh, many opportunities to see super bikes. This is actually the only opportunity for me, so I'm very happy to be here. And talk about a little bit um, for the benefit of people on Superbike TV that maybe don't follow MotoGP. You started out in 125 racing, um, this is when we met back at Donington Park, I think, uh, all those years ago. You progressed into T50s and then on to Moto2, winning the final ra race in Valencia in 2010, and then stepped up last year um, on the Cardio B Ducati into MotoGP. Describe the feeling of what you were thinking last year when you lined up on the grid um, for that first MotoGP race against the likes of Valentino Rossi. On one hand, it was a really amazing feeling, but on the other hand, I was very nervous. And I realized that MotoGP is not anymore 250, 125 or Moto2. Moto the MotoGP is really powerful and heavy bike, and it's really physically very difficult to uh, make, what is it, 115 kilometers. It's 23 laps here in Brno, and it's a really long race, and you really, really need to have enough power to, to just finish it. And how would you say that your first season in MotoGP was? I mean, I think for a lot of people at the start of the season, um, certainly in, in the UK, I think you unfairly came uh, under a lot of um, criticism and, and people saying that you shouldn't really be there, which I think is, is really unfair. I think you more than justified your place on the grid. W were you, would you say that you were happy um, with your debut season in MotoGP? I think my first season was very good, especially for our team. It was just perfect because we did uh, on our, I think it was the second race in Jerez, we did seventh position. Uh, I crashed in that race, picked up the bike anyway, it was seven, that was amazing, it was great for me and uh, the only thing that was bad, we had quite a lot of crashes, I think without these crashes we could be a uh, little bit better in the, in the field, you know, we would be a little bit higher, better position, but uh, anyway, the season was great, unfortunately this season doesn't go as well as the last year. I think I mean, we saw at, uh, at Silverstone, uh, obviously, the, the issue with your hand there, but um, you're back to full fitness now, so there's still a lot of races to go in the championship, and it's not inconceivable that you couldn't match or better um, the results that you got last year. But the Ducatis this year seem to be a little bit kind of, you know, not to the level that they were at last year, and it does seem a little bit more of an uphill challenge for you. Uh, what you said is true. The season is, the season is over for us. I mean, the whole classification, we can't be good anymore, but uh, we will definitely do our best to make a nice races, nice results and be happy with that. Unfortunately Ducati has some issues this year and it's not as fast as it was last year. So I hope they'll find some something on it so it will be a little bit faster and a little bit more competitive so I can fight again with Crutchlow as, as I did last year. Yeah, and absolutely. I remember the battle last year for the rookie of the year. He just pipped you at, uh, on the last lap there. But we're going to Laguna next for, for MotoGP, and it's a circuit that, um, that you've spectated at and obviously ridden at last year. A circuit that you like? I love Laguna Seca. It's a really amazing circuit. It's a uh, corkscrew. It's just perfect. But it's not only about corkscrew. It's about turn one, which is blind. It's about, I don't know, it's about many other corners which are blind or just simply difficult. A couple of questions that we've had, obviously, we put out on the website that we would be uh, speaking with you this weekend. So we have some questions that have uh, that have come from, from the UK. Um, number 17, I mean, I always used to run with, with number 19, and then Bautista obviously copied it from me, and, and etc. But, but yeah, but you, you raced number 17, and you have done for, for a number of years. Any particular reason to, to why you run number 17? Uh, I used to have number 44 when I was in 1 to 5, but then I... Uh, you copied that off me as well, didn't you? 44. Yeah, I started my career with 44. Uh, it's just an amazing number, isn't it? <laughs> but then, then I had to change. I had because I switched to 250s, and there was I think Sakiguchi at this time, who who had 44, so I couldn't have it. I had to pick a different number, and at at this time I was 17 years old, but it had nothing to do with it. It was just uh, I don't know number one, number seven, which are lucky numbers. We put them together, and that's, the, that's, that's 17. Okay. Um, another question that we've got is that um, your logo, um, I'm going to probably pronounce this wrong for your, for your nickname, is Abaka, and it looks like a stick of dynamite or something. So it's Abaya. Abaya, okay. Uh, what, what, what is the, the story behind the, the logo and behind the nickname? 
it's quite a long history if I if I have to say everything about it it's just my first my very first helmet when I started racing on mini bikes or pocket bikes uh, there was a not dynamite but I think it was a big bomb with the Japanese sign over it with the Japanese uh, big red dot or circle whatever it is uh, and I really liked it so later I had another bomb, different bombs than personal bombs. I had stickers, everything with it. And one of my friends, he came to make a new bomb. I asked really for the bomb. I said, do you want maybe something else? Maybe dynamite or something? I said, no, for sure not. So he did like 10 bombs and one dynamite. But I really liked the dynamite. So then he had to work more on the dynamite. And uh, I'm just changing it a little bit during the time, but not much. It's just uh, basically the same as uh, it has been five or eight years ago. Looking ahead then to 2013, um, since this is the first opportunity and probably the only opportunity we're going to get this year to talk to, I'll see whether we can get a little bit of a, a scoop. What are your plans for, for next year, Carol? Planning to stay in, in MotoGP and uh, I guess that's the ultimate uh, ambition. Yeah, for sure I want to stay in MotoGP if it's possible. We will do our best to stay there. I hope Ducati will make a little better or a little more competitive bike which will be uh, more fun to ride again. And I'm looking forward. I hope we can stay in MotoGP but we will see that in a few months probably. I'm going to be a little bit off the record here, and uh, not, not that I'm supposed to put in personal plugs, but uh, as I say, we've been friends for a while, and as you know, my, my little nephew's not been, not been too well, so uh, he's thankfully out of hospital now and at home, but uh, his bedroom no longer has uh, Uncle Michael and number 19, it's uh, obviously Carol Abraham and number 17 everywhere, so I do actually hate you for that, but I'm um, just wondering if you could maybe just say a little message or something to, uh, to, my, uh, to my little nephew. Of course. Of course, I'm very glad that he likes me, that he's a big fan of me and I hope he will keep on uh, watching our races and keep fingers crossed for me because I really want to make a nice result and I hope to see him soon at, at the races. No, that's perfect. Carol, always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, one of the nicest people that I've had the pleasure of meeting in the paddock. Um, all the best for Laguna and the rest Thank of the you. season. Thanks a lot. Thank you.